want a silver caddy with a land out top. I want a sugar daddy with a candy shop. I want a lot of things out of money can't buy. What I want most is a pie in the sky. What I want most is a pie in the sky. So this is Emily and Alex coming at you again with yeah. the Slumber Party Massacre series. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about each one and we're going to review them. And then we're going to go over our favorite kills of the three and our favorite killers from least favorite to favorite. So we start out with number one. On the back of the VHS box, it says, when Trish decides to invite her high school girls basketball team over for a slumber party, she makes three big mistakes. Number one, she snubs the pretty new girl next door. Number two, she forgets about teenage pranksters Jeff and Neil. Number three, her biggest mistake. She doesn't know about an escaped mental patient who will soon be dropping in on the party with his portable drill. Written, directed, and produced by women, Slumber Party Massacre will scare you down to the core, and you'll love it. 1982. So what are your thoughts, Alex? So I definitely think that this is um, one of the, the top movies in the kind of scantily clad sort of over the top, you know, girls and uh, nightgowns and all that kind of stuff. And, and that sort of a, a subgenre um, for all of slasher movies. Um, I just think that Slumber Party Massacre 1 did a really, really good job at trying to sort of reverse roles a little bit. As you mentioned, it was directed and written by women. So we already have a different element than we're, you know, we're used to. And right off the bat, I think the first thing I notice is the gender swapping. You know, we have a repair woman at the very beginning of the movie, not a repair man. The, the, the women, the girls are on a basketball team. We don't usually see girls playing sports, I should say, unless it's cheerleading. We see them usually being frivolous and just kind of boring. Um, their coach is female. So we just see a lot of things like that. And then the boys in the movie are, are, are super just goofy and happy-go-lucky, and they're sort of playing that reverse role as well. So that was the first thing I noticed and that I, I enjoy the most is just how it totally flips us. Well, okay, so on the back of the box, it says, number two, she forgets about teenage pranksters Jeff and Neil. So did I. When I rewatched it, I forgot, like, I completely forgot there were even guys in this movie. I mean, I knew there were just because it's this type of movie. But uh, I think they I, I don't know about the gender reverse like role reversal on that because they do go to the house to watch them naked in the window. It's kind of like that's kind of a normal thing. And also they added in, which I'm sure I, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure they probably added in that uh, shower scene at the after the you know, they play basketball just because Roger Corbin, who produced it. Well, oh yeah. He didn't, he didn't he did there was another producer but he was the one that wanted to put these out. He ne he needs boobs. So I'm sure that was added in, but it's pretty much I mean like at the beginning you have like full frontal nudity, which I probably weird for the time, I think. Yeah, I think it's weird for the time and I do think though that while you're watching that and seeing that up front the full frontal nudity like everything in the showers you can like hear the soap squeaking on their bodies it feels like but that kind of goes away and i feel like it just goes on a different path to a little more female empowerment because even as the movie progresses you know th these girls kind of band together and they're like forming this group and they're going to take down this killer that's attacking them and it's just um i don't know i just see them a lot of, i see a lot of female empowerment and camaraderie that you don't typically see in these slasher films with with uh, women well, they do band together, but not until the pranksters have watched them completely undress in front of each other and put on, like, nightgowns. Uh, well, that, that's Corman again, probably. Yeah, a prank, yeah. Pranker's going to prank. <laughs> but I will also say, at the same time, that I think that these slasher movies in general, not even these, but all of them— Except for the ones with male hair, uh, like the male heroes, which isn't that often. But you get, I mean, I think they're, I think all slashers are pretty feminist, honestly, because you always have the girl that lives and is the one that fights. Like all the, usually the guys are pretty useless in these movies. 
Well, some general. of them, yes, yes, some of them. And like when there's more guys in the mix, um, I can see that when the it's the final girl, you know, kind of playing out. But in these movies and um, like you know sorority movies where it's like all girls, when like all the girl all all girls but one is being like uh just humiliated and exploited naked and murdered and all these things and one of them survived that's a pretty small percentage but in this one i just thought that there was a lot of i didn't know who the final girl was going to be it could have been any of them um right no that's true that that's true because you kind of think it's going to be at trish i guess right but it's that yeah you you're supposed to think because she's because valerie's not supposed to be like a uh a character really yeah. i mean yeah. well you don't think she's gonna be she is but you don't think she's gonna be because she doesn't go to the party right you expect you fully expect it to be trish just because it's her house and she seems oh my like God. A, she's the captain of the team do you hear that do i hear what oh my god my computer is going crazy You're trying to give me discounts on norton well tell norton to fuck off and we're talking oh my about my party get out of here Okay, I'm not even going to cut that out, but it was it just sent me like 75 ads on Firefox. I don't need that. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> the thing I like about this movie is the killer is creepy and it does follow some sort of a little, you know, a standard trope of you know, he's unknown, he's an escaped lunatic, a mental patient, all these things. Um and we don't really know why he's just becoming a total savage with a drill and going after these girls. But in all of the three movies, I think he looks the creepiest and he's the one that I would least likely walk down a dark alley towards. Um, and also the least likely to be invited into my house based on his, his, his just persona, his appearance, his, his dead eyes. I mean, he's a total creeper. Yeah, that's true. But I, I will say um, a problem that some, some horror movie fans uh, have with actually all of these movies is that um, it's not it? There's no who done it kind of thing. Like you know who? I mean, you don't know him, but you see him the whole time. You know, he's not like this masked guy. It's, it's just yeah, it's, it's not his hand. It's like you literally see him running down the girl at the very beginning. Yeah, um, exactly. You see him from like the one of the first shots. I mean, that's that's pretty abnormal, I think. Like to especially even if you see the guy's face in other slasher movies, it's not till the end because it's like, oh, it was this guy. But like in this one there's no that th- they had to like look in other places to get suspense because there's no suspense on who's doing it. Yeah, and then when it comes to suspense, you know, in this one we have <clears throat> I think it's this one where they, you know, creep up to the window and then like they flip open the curtains and there's this like massacred naked Barbie doll, like nailed to the window frame. Like is that this, cr- is that this one? Is that this one? Or is it part two? It can't be part two because. It's be part no, one, yeah, yeah, it is part. It is part one. Yeah. Sorry. I was thinking about, yeah, because it's that. Yes. Yeah, because it's. Yeah. I know so who it, it is. And so like yeah. I can under, Oh, that's right. That's right. Cause well, while, while you're watching it, while you're watching it for the first time, um, you know, you're sitting there thinking, OK, it makes sense that he's got these tools. He just killed that blonde Rambo repair woman with her truckload of tools. But then you're like, well, how does he just find a Barbie? You're just, you're assuming it's him. And how does he find this Barbie and just nail it to the wall? It's just it's it's that's kind of suspenseful because you're like, why? And stuff like that. But you know who the killer is. True. And also the guys are completely forgettable. Honestly, like I was when I was rewatching it because uh, spoiler alert. Well, it isn't because we're giving our reviews. This is my least favorite. I'm not a huge fan of this one. I don't rewatch this one like I do the other two. Uh, But like, I forgot guys were, I forgot those guys were even in the movie. Honestly, I was just like, oh yeah, they're here. Okay. Well, I can understand forgetting those guys in the movie, but how could you forget the pizza, man? You're not going to eat that dead guy's pizza. Yeah, I don't like that scene, though, because I think it's I mean, I like the death, but I don't like when she's sitting on his body. I just think that's it's kind of a dumb scene. But I do like the one girl that gets put in the fridge. I think that's really cool, because especially when they like keep on trying to uh, Courtney keeps trying to open it or, like Courtney. she's about to open it. And then like that dead girl's like about to fall out. Courtney, you're underage. And then she's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good because there's always this terror tied to opening and closing the refrigerator doors, and they just completely bypass that, and it's sort of comedic, but because you're like, oh. also, 
Can you remind me why Valerie ends up even going over there? Because I can't even remember why how she gets involved. I mean, I just know they're next door, and I don't know if the girls come over, if she sees them screaming. I have, I have, if she hears a car, a car horn honking from that one girl that dies in the garage. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. Because Courtney's the one opening that fridge, so. Uh, anyway, I mean, and Valerie's the one saying you're underage. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know why they go over there, and they might hear noises or something. But they yeah, weren't I invited. Can't... Yeah, honestly, I tried to I tried to rewatch this one before we did this, and I only got through half of it. I got to the part where uh, Courtney's reading uh, play Playgirl, and and she talks about uh, her sister says she's been beating off since fifth grade, and I was like, so, what? So yeah, that that adds to a little more of it, more empowerment than we normally see, and a little more gender swapping. We see her looking at Playgirl with Sylvester Stallone and the Italian Stallion, and talking about her beating off. I mean, like they're totally flipping it on us a little bit here that wouldn't you know what i mean i love that yeah i do like that um and it is a bunch of girls it's not just like everyone else has been killed off and i mean because for most of the movie the other girls know that there are people getting killed so yeah. okay i think we should move on to part two though since that's uh well i mean it's I don't know if it's my favorite. I like part three a whole lot too, but um, I know part this two is, is part two is Bay. Let's kick it off. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so well, let's well let's finish the review of the first one. I don't really like it that much. I think it's a little too serious, and not actually not serious. It's just I feel like it's good. I mean, I get I it, it makes sense that they were going for something like a. Or when she wrote it, it was like a parody kind of thing. And then Roger Corman didn't want it like that. And it it, it seems kind of like it doesn't know what kind of movie it is to me. Yeah, I mean, and while I, I can see all those things as well, I, I like it. I think um, it set up a, a great franchise. And I like that it, it it's sort of serious it's, it has a it has a lot less levity than the other two certainly do but then it well, also I mean, it's straightforward it's a, it's it's yeah. more of a straight well the third one too but it, i mean it's it, it is the most like serious straightforward slasher of the three yeah and the comedy that's in it is not necessarily because of as much so bad acting poor scripting um you know weird conversations it's not as much that there that still does definitely exist but it's not as culty or campy I that's guess. probably why yeah i think that's probably why i don't like it as much oh i love my campy and culty so no that's what i that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's pro- that's probably why i don't like the first one as much because it's a little too like and also a lot of people they're like oh 1981 and this came out in 82 but 81 was like the big year for slashers and it's you know it had like my bloody valentine and uh the prowler i mean all these slasher movies came out in 81 and it was the piggybacking off of that and i'm not a big fan of the early slashers which i know is like blasphemy because every that's usually people's favorite era mine's more of like the later slashers when they got a little bit more silly so that's probably another reason like i it's it's just a, probably a little too serious for me yeah and i think that this one too though is what you're what you kind of said in a couple different ways in the first one is it doesn't know if it's supposed to be serious or funny so it sort yeah. of just hovers in the middle because in 82 we're sort of like i don't know we're just in the middle of a, a lot of transition with horror movies and slashers in general yeah, I think yeah, it definitely the, the it doesn't know it, the, the not knowing. That's why the pizza scene doesn't work for me, where she's sitting on the dead guy because it's like, well, so far I haven't really thought this was like a comedy slash is a comedy horror. So why is it kind of just is thrown in there, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Next, we're going to be talking about Slumber Party Massacre Two. Yeah. Oh, I love the song. I wanna be your Tokyo convertible. I wanna have fun with you. I just love going through the motions. I just love going through the motions. I 
Okay, so we're moving on to part two. I'm going to read the back of the VHS. Uh, by the way, let's let's talk about the fact that usually they don't use the real actors on the front of these Slumber Party Massacre movies, except for the first one they use uh, the girl that's eating the pizza. She's on that one. This one actually uses two of them. Sally and I can never remember her name. The one that was the girl that was in. Um, Sheila. Part five. Yeah. Yeah. Sheila. Sheila. I don't know They're who both... that other girl is in the front with the stripes. No, she's uh, she's she's not in the movie because a lot of times they didn't use like in the third yeah. one. They didn't use anyone that was All in the right. movie. But anyway. OK. Not the point. OK. So it says the driller killer is back and he parties for keeps. The only sane survivor of Slumber Party Massacre, Courtney, dreams, which is the sister of Valerie, the one that beats off in fifth grade, dreams of the drill murderer returning. She can't shake the horrible feeling that she and her friends will be viciously tormented and brutally butchered. Again and again, the nightmare returns. Dazed, Courtney loses control and her nightmare crosses into reality. No one believes her until it's too late. The driller killer returns reincarnated as an evil rocker. He methodically stalks them, then violently gores them to death, one by one. Mixing elements of Nightmare on Elm Street with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, only the fittest can survive. Slumber Party Massacre 2. Your thoughts. Yes, so my thoughts. So um, I think that this is a total fever dream, horror, musical light, sort of, um, if you want to put it that way. I think that if I I had not seen this. Fever dream, fever dream is the best way to describe it. I mean, I mean, I've seen some crazy films and some art house nonsense, but like. This is not that. It's it's just a fever dream, and it's a fun fever dream. Um, the meds kicked in, so I think that had I not seen this so young, and then also with you and you know with friends and stuff like that, if I had just uh, stumbled across this, I probably wouldn't have liked it, and then I wouldn't have built all those nostalgia vibes with the movie. Um, but that's why I go back to it over and over and over again. It's because I just love it so much. I love the, I love the musical element. I love all the songs. I love the ones he, the killer sings because he's breaking out with his guitar drill. I love the songs that they're in a band and they're like, you know, the runaways. I like the, the, the better than the, ru- oh. oh, better. Yeah, they better. are better. They are I'm better. I'm sorry, but Wednesday week, that band they based it off of. They're really good. Better, they are. better than the, they are. They are so good. I agree. And um, so all of that. And then the more, though, I watch it, the more, you know, you just can't help but try as you get older and, you know, you read things and learn things to pick up on other meanings. And I totally, as a, a gay man, see this as a an allegory for Courtney either being lesbian or bisexual. The whole movie to me just seems like the, every time that she gets excited, every time that she gets excited or she dreams – um, you know, we start seeing images of this driller, this driller killer, and he's kind of sexy as well. Um, Creepy. I mean, he really is. I know that he's like a lot of people think he's jokey, but I think I mean, yeah, and he is. But he's he's creepy, too. He is super creepy, but we only start seeing her at first when she's, you know, daydreaming by the pool or when she's driving. Uh, just when she's fantasizing about I think his name's Matt. And then when they yes. finally start making out and like, sorry, but the, he's, you know, I mean, you're gay. He's gay. Oh, is he? He has to be. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure the way would, that the way that he dances when he sits on the car. I wouldn't mind if a driller killer was. I mean, <laughs> we give anyway, that's a different conversation. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, an, eight, that's an 18 and up podcast. Um, <laughs> and um. well, the, the drill on, yeah, the drill kind of, was super phallic. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, so in this movie, it's this guy, you know, he's like, he's always like tongue licking in the air and his drill and scaring the girls. And I just, I just, I just don't know. I can just see this being inner demons coming to terms with your own sexuality and how it's manifesting. Um, and then, you know, even at the very beginning, in our, one of the, our favorite moments when she's singing that Tokyo convertible song, one of the lyrics that she really feels passionate about she says, I just love going through the motions. And like, did she mean that? Probably not. But I read into that thinking that she's 
going through the motions and she's going through the motions as as she's supposed to i don't know that's just me that's my thought no i i think it's <laughs> definitely that and it's but it's also playing on a uh <clears throat> i mean i didn't realize that this came out five whole years after the first one that's a long time when you think about it for a, like i know it's not really a it's not a franchise because there's only three of them well, I mean, if you count the Sorority House Massacres, it's kind of is a franchise. But five years between a first one and a second one is a lot. Yeah. But um, but they came back and they wanted to, obviously, they wanted to make money off of, like, a Nightmare on Elm Street kind of idea. Oh, but, totally. Yeah, because he's in the dreams and everything. And, so they're, they're, and, and then that was when... Um, this was what Nightmare on Elm Street, probably three or four at this point, and maybe. And I like, don't. Okay, eighty uh, eighty four was one. It's well, either yeah, way. It's, three it's, three it's, would have been like yeah, some somewhere around there. It's Freddy Mania, and they're just totally cap. Uh, what's we're not capsulating, captivating. Uh, or they're. Totally, I know they're. Yeah, I know what word you're looking for, but I can't. Capitalizing. Capitalizing. capitalizing on, that's on, it. On Freddy Mania. No, totally. Because I I have some. I actually own. There are two different ones. I can't remember what one of them's. One of them's called Bad Dreams. But that like around that time, like they were they had tons of movies coming out like that. But I think this one's the best one. I think this one's better than this movie is better than and whatever y'all can kill me for saying this, but that this I would rather watch this movie than probably like. It, any of the Nightmare on Elm Street. Not to say, like, I like 1, 3, and 4 a whole lot. and I, But I think this one has more rewatchability, honestly. Well, it's probably also a lot, I think, too. There's so much good music. There's so much campiness. There's so many memorable quotes from this movie. There's In, in one movie, there really is so much that just really, like sparks that nostalgia sparks that that levity and makes you smile and laugh there's not really terror per se but it's just a lot of it's a lot of fun in this movie yeah, but, i mean that's not what the fred i mean later on the freddy movies i know they're horror movies but like the, like when he became a pop culture icon and he had the one-liners and stuff yeah they were still scary but like it was a lot of like camp too and i'm not saying that i think this movie's better than one three and well one and three I'm not saying that. I just think that I, because there's a difference between rewatchability and how good a movie, like, you know, the actual, if a movie is good or not. Yeah. And, and, I, would, also, and I would rather watch this. Like, I, I mean, I said in the Friday the 13th podcast, I think that that franchise by far has the best rewatchability of any of the big franchises. Now that's not to say that I don't think that the first time at Marin Elm Street is, I think the first Nightmare on Elm Street is a better movie than some of the Friday the 13th, but I probably would rather watch the Friday the 13th over and over. And that's kind of like the same thing here. No, yeah, totally agree with it, with that. Cause like Nightmare on Elm Street could, can still kind of scenes kind of still scare me. Like the hallway scenes, the, the, the Tina's death scene, nothing in Friday the 13th really scares me so much anymore, but it's, it's just I, fun. But I rewatch it. I, I would re sometimes, sometimes I don't want to just totally dive to invest in a serious. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You just have to like, uh, it, it's just something to good to have on. Yeah. And while we can rate, like you could, like, I mean, this is a totally made up thing. You know, we could give summer party massacre, you know, two, uh, four out of five stars, but we could give Nightmare on Elm Street th uh, three, three and a half stars. That doesn't mean that I think that the 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 the, the, the rating scale sort of adjusts. That's for changes. you personally. That's yeah, I mean, like, me. I can I can look, I can watch Nightmare on Elm Street, especially one and three. Those and four, but one and three are like I think really bad. really great movies. And okay. if I was like going to critically review them, I would say, of course, you know, five out of five. Compared oh, to Slumber totally. Party Massacre 2, which would be like, I don't know, three out of, I mean, I like it a lot more than some people do, but like, but if I'm going to put on a movie and like just have it in the background or like I'm going to show a movie to friends or something like that, I probably would show this over maybe not part three, but like, it's just, you have to pay it, you know, you have to like be ready to pay attention to yeah, and, more. and in this movie, we have really cool things. We have we have a lot like so you don't actually get a kill, a kill kill until like almost a, like, a, 
Way oh, into a it. full hour into the movie almost. But before that, you've got this hand sandwich. You know, she's eating like a sloppy joe or a burger and there's a hand in the sandwich. And uh-huh. then she's opening the refrigerator and this this comic, this fake as hell chicken bursts out of the fridge and starts gushing blood out of its neck all over her. And, and a pimple. You cannot forget the gigantic zit with Heidi Kozak or Sally you know, character's name. That's, I mean, there's just a lot of really cool things that happen to keep it entertaining. And you really don't realize that there's no deaths. And then all the deaths happen in like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think that, and what's funny about this movie, and I've talked about this, I think when I was talking about Friday the 13th, I with somebody, and I also talk about it with, uh, when I've talked about Sleepaway camp, I, whenever I watch these movies, Oh no, I was talking about hiding go shriek because there aren't that many deaths in that movie. But like, I like the camaraderie scenes. Like, I don't I don't care about the, like, people don't like the scenes where no one's getting killed. I like those scenes. Like, in Sleepaway Camp, I like the baseball scene. I just like it, like, when they're, like, having fun. I yeah. think that when I was in high school, especially, and you can attest, like, I would, like, I, I was, like, wishing that would was my life. You know, like, the scenes where they're not getting killed. But, like, you know, like, the people that are dating and hide and go shriek. Like I was like, I want that to be me. Yeah. And, when, and we and will the, not name the person that I wanted to be dating. And I think no, you know who it was. we, we will not, um, <clears throat> but what, <laughs> what, what those scenes do while, you know, sleep wake or summer party massacre two had a, like, again, like 50 minutes to an hour longer of those scenes. But those scenes are essential that we, fa- but we fall in love with because they make us actually care about who we is dying. Care about, yeah. Because when Sally dies, Oh my God. I mean, besides the fact that it's ridiculous because she just goes past the opening and straight into the wall. Like, oh she could just, I mean, that's ridiculous. Oh my God. But, like, yeah. you love her, though. Like, and she, and to, that's a hard thing to do, especially with that kind of character, because I can't think of another movie that has that kind of character that you wouldn't just hate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like usually the, you would hate that character because she's. You know, she's like very Valley Girl. I don't know what Courtney's getting for her birthday. Like, and she's kind of just vapid. And you would hate Sheila. Like, she's a bitch. But when it comes to Sally, though, you know, and what we do get in some of those other scenes, yeah, she's obsessed with her Oxy 10 and she's obsessed with, like, I don't know. She's just very, again, what's a music career? Vapid. But then, you know, we see her on the way to their, you know, timeshare or whatever this is. We see her reading a book. I mean, it's called Hot, Wet, and Wild. It's totally a timeshare, and they never say that, but you know it is. Oh, yeah, my so, God. It, so, it so is. So while she's reading Hot, Wet, and Wild or whatever, she's still reading. She's exploring another side of her that we don't usually see. And then, you know, we see her writing that music, that the song that we sang earlier. Um, yeah. We see her writing that, and you can just, like, you can see, like, a, a star is born in her eyes. <laughs> Like, well, and she, well, the, I think it's most apparent with Sheila because she is. There are a lot of scenes. She's a total bitch. Like she really is. I mean, like she's so, not the. She's she says she has a lot of backhanded comments. She says stuff behind people's back. Like she's not very nice, but you end up really liking her, especially like because of that scene where she's like dancing and stuff. I mean, if you took out Heather McNamara from the Heather's. And threw her into the like, yes. universe. That is Sheila. Yeah. Basically. And you still like Heather McNamara too. I mean. But yeah. Sally. And Sally is the only one on this trip that doesn't have like a love interest with her. Because music is her love. She doesn't have a yeah. guy. You're Sheila's got right. Sheila's got that creepy guy. I don't know if he's supposed to be Valley oh, Boy. I love I love him. I love him, but I love him so much. Valley Boy, and then you know when she, when she goes, TJ, I think his name's TJ. She's like TJ, don't t- don't touch her boob. Like you hardly hear it when he's like jumping after her in the pool. She's like, get your hand off her boob. Get your hand off her boobs. <laughs> yes, and then you know you've got um, what's her name? Um, it's, uh, it's the one that wouldn't a- get nude but was a playmate of the year. Amy, Amy. No, I don't. Amy. I don't Isn't know if it, that's her. Is it it's, Kimberly? Is it Kimberly MacArthur in real life? It's the one that like was a Playboy playmate, but wouldn't do nudity for the movie. Yeah, it's it's her name's Amy. Yeah, uh, she she was Kimberly MacArthur. I'm pretty sure. I know her name's. Kim, I I knew that part. Yeah, uh, you're right. It's I she, never know her name. She's honestly. got she's got um 
what's his name? Oh, um, that the the good guy, but he's not. Um, his Matt. No, she, no yeah, that it, Matt is it. Matt. Matt is um is Courtney's. No, yeah, you're right. TJ Jeff. Yeah, and it, he's a, he's, he's just a poor man Zian Zering, basically. Oh my God, he totally is. I was, <laughs> and, you know what? And they had the same. Oh my God, I thought the same thing in the first one. That one guy in the first one. I just, I, part, they're, they're so forgettable, just like you said. No, I, I know, I know. Yeah, there's one guy in the first one that I'm taking a picture and sending it to you, but like, it's the one on the right. But he looked, yeah, it's, it's like, I don't know what they were doing. I guess. You know what? Beverly Hills wasn't even out yet, so. 84 or 87? It oh, you're right. It wasn't out until 1990. Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, like, they didn't know what a poor man's Ian. I mean, I think Ian Zeering is a, or Ian, I'm sorry, Ian. Man, whatever. Someone's probably out there crucifying us right now. Yeah, I know. Sorry, guys, but Ian Zeering is a poor man's Ian Zeering, so. I still love him in Sharknado, but we're digressing. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I still, I mean, I love him in Beverly Hills 90210, but I mean, and, and I did, I did mention this earlier. Um, with Heather McNamara could be plucked out of Heather's and put into this movie. And another reason this, this movie is great is Jennifer Rhodes was literally plucked out of Heather's and put in this movie. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, it, well, this whole movie is just great. And I was telling, I know I was telling you this earlier, but I got to see it at, this place we have called Central Cinema, it's clearly not open right now because of Corona, but it's like a, it's a local, it, it, they show, they show some new movies, but they show a lot of older movies. They show like a lot of Kung Fu on certain days. Um, it's actually where I saw um, Fabio Fritzi, the guy that does the music for like zombie, all those Lucio Fulci movies. Yeah. He actually played with his band while the Beyond was showing. Yeah. It was awesome. But they played a Slumber Party Massacre too, and it was like filled. Everyone was like going crazy. Except for one of the guys there told me to be quiet at one point and I was like, um, it's Slumber Party Massacre too, and I'm sorry that I'm laughing you and I don't care if you hear this. You know who you are. That was an asshole move. I'm sorry, I'm I'm still pissed off about that. It <laughs> really, said- I, I, and I'm gonna go off on it right now. You don't show a movie. In your cinema called Slumber Party Massacre 2. And if so, if one person laughs and like repeats something that someone said because it was funny, you don't turn around and shush them. Okay? Like, I mean, it's, rude. Yeah. it's rude. It's rude. It's rude and it's unnecessary. You're showing Slumber Party Massacre 2. You're not showing like freaking Vietnam in color. Or, yeah. I mean, or, I, it was, that wasn't what it's, it's World War II in color. Whatever. You're not showing like, I'm just, I'm, you're no, not showing I, Citizen Kane. I feel you. We were, I was, and this is not the same, but kind of the same to me. I was at a Rod Stewart concert and some 50 year old woman told me to sit down. I was like, we're outdoors. What song, what song a, was playing? Um, uh, uh, duh, um, was it a, was it, do you think I'm sexy? It was definitely not. Do you think I'm sexy? Well, whatever you stand up at a concert, I don't know. It just really especially pissed me an off. outdoor concert. And this guy always does that stuff, but he like owns the place. So once he hears this, over, I'll, I don't care. I don't care if I'm banned. You don't do that. You yeah. don't do that during. Also, by the way, it was Slumber Party Massacre too. It's always been one of my favorite movies, and so you're lucky that I'm even there. Honestly, seriously, that just up the um atmosphere for him and he doesn't even know it which shocked me that because like i told you earlier there has been so much hate for this movie on some of those slasher movie like facebook groups and they're like people are like i hate this movie like i hate it and i'm like well you went into the wrong like you went into it with the wrong mindset then clearly yeah, I mean, I can see that. I just, I can't, I can't see, I can't understand how anyone just wouldn't find this entertaining at the least. I know, either. same, same. And and like, you're in a slasher movie group. Like, are you really going into any of these being like, I'm just about to watch this critically acclaimed movie? I mean, like, no, you're watching slasher movies. Yeah, like everything can't be like Peeping Tom or, you know, these other 
Black Christmas. Everything's not going to be a, ma- a cinematic masterpiece. And I don't want Christmas. it to be. That's they, the whole point. Like that's the re- I think that's the reason I like later slashers is because yeah. I don't want this like ser- I don't like the seriousness of it. I want it to be like campy. I want it to be silly. Like I don't I don't need this like I I, I don't know what you're trying to do. You know the horror genre is not known for making you know, i mean i guess that well, i mean it, halloween it's not known for, the 13th nightmare on elm street my bloody valentine black christmas those are all pretty serious they have but it's not acting. known but the the whole genre is not known for being like this uh it's not known for like having that great a movie you know what i mean like people don't look at the genre very kindly anyway it's like the porn of horror yeah <laughs> right so like why or the porn of movies really but well. I guess the porno <laughs> movies would be porno. But you know what I mean? Like the like it's horror movies are not like looked upon as being the like great achievements. I mean, some of them are, but as a whole, you don't expect a. No one goes into a horror movie expecting it to be like as you know, The Exorcist every time. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I just don't get why people hate it. But anyway, I digress from. Uh, that place central cinema is a great place to go by the way sorry it's just that one guy pissed me off and while Uh, you mentioned central cinema and you said that sometimes they play kung fu movies um the back of the the back of the box no the back of the box for slumber party massacre one said trish disobeyed three rules no she she disobeyed a fourth rule she learned basketball instead of taekwondo true facts she could have kicked what are you gonna do throw throw a basketball at someone's head and yeah. knock it off. I'm exactly. sure that's happened in a horror movie, but exactly. I'm anyway. sure, I th- has it happened? I feel like someone's thrown a basketball at someone's head, and it's <laughs> and it's. I feel like they've thrown it like ball. really hard, like dodgeball or basketball, really hard at someone's face. I feel like we can find that out. I feel like yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll move on to part three. You know what? This is the only one that I still have from my Massacre collection. Is the Massacre collection the one that had Slip, Slip, Slumber Party 1, 2, well, 3, it's, and it's the 1 and so 2? We bought, it's, yeah, it's the ones we bought. Like the, we it has bought, that like, banner. It has yes. that banner on the top. I think it says Massacre Collection. Yes, it's the only one I have left. I had to rebuy the other ones. Oh, I don't, wow. I, and maybe they're at home somewhere, but my mom hid them, I guess. Not on purpose. She doesn't care. She probably just, like, put them somewhere. Um, Okay, so on the back of Slumber Party Massacre 3, this is what it says. Seven California co-eds are dressed to kill, and a murderer is, well, dressed to drill. He's an insomnomaniac looking for luscious bods to bore, and it looks like you'll find them at the Slumber Party Massacre. The Driller Killer is back in Part 3 of the Classic Horror Fest. This time, Jackie, Diane, and Marcia. Martia? Maria? Her name is Maria, but it's Her spelled name- Mar. No, on the back it says M A R T I A. Oh yeah, that's Maria. That's just that just shows oh, you. Oh my like, god, what, it totally what, is. That's, that shows you where we're going with this. With yeah, this. Yeah. Her name's Maria. Okay, so they're all. Uh, they're three high school girls who love a good time. When they party, they bust out their bikinis and break out the bruise. No, they but don't. The drill, I know. But the driller killer is out for a thrill with his drill, and he's ready to kill. Joe Bob did say check this one out. Power drill through the upholstery, sledgehammer fun, bleach in the eyes. Joe Bob says check it out. So, oh, and that, look, it came out in 2000. That makes sense because that's when we bought them. That that edition came out in 2000? That edition did, yeah. This movie came out in... 19, I think 90. 90, yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay, so what is, what, what's your review of this one? Well, you know, they do bring out... They don't bust out the bikinis. The movie starts out and they're on the beach in the bikinis, I should say, I guess. But, like, whatever, I digress on that. But the IMDb um, description was was a lot better and probably more factual. And all it, all it says is Jackie Cassidy and her friends are stalked by a serial killer while having a slumber party. Period. Mm-hmm. That's all we needed. We didn't need all that. And <laughs> and, and 
Mar Marsha is already, you know, <laughs> a poor woman's Elvira. So she doesn't need to be disgraced anymore by having her name. Yeah. Ruined her like name's that. Maria. And her name's Maria in real life, too. Oh, it is? Yeah, we'll it's Maria go, Ford. We'll, we'll go into Maria in a minute. Oh, we <laughs> sure is. We will. There's a lot to talk about Maria. But um, this, this movie, yeah. I like that. So it's totally not connected. And as a trilogy, you kind of expect the third movie to have a connection. But there's no connection at all. This is literally just about, you know, a girl. And I'm pretty sure she's, like, moving across the country or something. And she's, like, throwing yeah, a laugh. she's about to move. Yeah. Yeah. Sell her house. A last minute little get together, soccer, volleyball party. I mean, um, a little party at the house. And, you know, from the very opening scene, like, we're like, what's going on? Who are these people? And who is this creepy voyeur on the beach? Oh, remember, with, like, it has two red it has two red it has, herrings. Yeah, red herrings galore. And they're both these creepy men, kind of art housey. One's a doctor and one's just. No, he's like a. Is he a doctor? I, but, he just yeah. he likes watching the stars. No, he's also well. He could be a PhD, but he's a doctor because remember they keep calling they call the nine one one all the time, and then finally he's like nine one one. I'm a doctor, and they're like I'm on oh, the way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, they're like so title driven, but yeah, red herrings everywhere. You're like who who are these creepos? And they're obviously the ones that are the killers. But then you're thinking, well, obviously not. Because P.S. I'm not spoiling it now. If you watch the previews of this movie, they they show the man running around with the drill in the previous yeah, we're, well we're gonna spoil it anyway yeah so i mean but this is the first movie in the trilogy where you don't totally straight up front know who the killer is or any connections so yeah it's supposed that. to be a whodunit if then, we hadn't watched yeah, the preview first if, if we hadn't yeah and then the whodunit is mixed with i think they did a poor job at so clearly they're ex not exploiting um but it, it comes across as exploitation in my opinion mental illness and some sort of abuse or PTSD suffering. Yeah, and this, this, I, I don't know if they say it out loud, but it's implied that he was molested by his uncle. That, yeah. His uncle was this police officer and we put two and two together. This police officer either got killed on the job or killed himself. And there's, yeah, I think there are like newspaper clippings. If, yeah. Like when he goes back and like, I think that there's like something in there that makes you think he's a, like, I didn't just. No, there's a photo him. of him kissing him. Like, 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 but you would like lovingly kiss like a child, like that's your, you know, like embrace, like, but, but it, it's, it's kind of weird. And you just, you infer more, but they don't give you more to infer or, yeah. or make rational deductions. But looking back, you know, 30 years later, we're th I'm, th I'm thinking, cause like he, he freaks out every time you go touch his Mr. Happy, he freaks out and stabs you with a drill. And like, they would, well, not really, because the first girl, like he goes crazy when you try to touch him. Yeah. But also they wouldn't have had that much in there if it wasn't supposed to supposed to be. I agree. I, I mean, think they wouldn't have had that something. much like information in there if it wasn't supposed to be like a molestation of some sort. I think it was definitely molestation. He has PTSD and mental illness, but that's, but then, but then why he's going after this section of this, this group of girls is totally rando. Well, no, it's not because you're Juliet, crazy little sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, why, because I mean, he, he knows. Maybe he hated Craig. Maybe uh, he was. Just, maybe he was in love with him. Oh my God, Craig! <laughs> for those of you, for those of you listening, Craig is the name of the bot that records on Discord, and we've had a lot of great fun with him. Yeah, it's fun as in I want to punch him if he was a real person. And so you know how um, I like to say people are a poor man's something. Yeah. Speaking of, and going back to the beach where we meet Craig and or meet Juliet and we don't meet Craig. We, yeah, we meet Juliet. We, <laughs> we meet Ryan, um, who said that quote. But the voyeur on the beach, the red herring on the beach, is a poor man's Taylor Hansen. Fight me. Oh my God, he totally is. <laughs> No, I will not fight you because <laughs> I didn't even know that guy's name was Ryan, honestly. Wait, I'm lying. I think his real name is Ryan. Ken is his name in the movie. I'm sorry. I totally messed that up. Oh, Ken, yeah, it is Ken. Oh, okay, because I was like. And Britain, was... Britain Fry is his name in real life. I don't know what I'm, yeah, what, and what he I'm was smoking. In, well, he was in a uh, hiding and Hide, And his name's Randy. I don't know where I got Ryan. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Britain. What a name. What a name. He looks like a Britain. You're Craig. Yeah. Juliet. Craig's sister. Oh my God. <laughs> God. He has the best quotes. 
But uh, yeah, I really, I honestly, I really like this one. Although, and I've and I've heard I've other heard podcasts talk about this. this. It's like it's a, like, it's kind it's of dark. dark. I mean, it's a pretty dark movie if you think about it. Everything, you know, there are some scenes that are like ridiculous, but otherwise, it's a pretty dark movie. No, I think there's a lot of dark elements. So we we already touched on the, you know. The potential molestation of you know uh, adult and child. Then there's the um, it, it goes into a little bit like the very first death in the movie. <clears throat> you know this girl's just walking down her walking down an alley to her car. I think and she was the same girl in the free fallen video or something. She's famous for something. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that no, sounds I, no, ridiculous. No, I'm, I'm, I was just trying to think, and I I don't know the answer. To her, I just know that she didn't bring the meat to the party, and they hated her, and they were so mad at her the whole movie. Oh yeah, they were. Um, because she, I mean, what an asshole. Yeah, but so we we and that was a big thing, like you know the '90s when like the early '90s the urban legend of like getting into your car by yourself and people in the back seat or under the car. That was darkish to me, and then the darkest thing ever. The rape. Which we yeah we. Well, it's not I'll, really. I'll let I guess you go. You can go into a little more on the after effects and like how if how she it, was in the free fallen video because she was also in that movie Twisted Nightmare. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, but Maria was about to be raped and 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 it was very traumatic watching this scene. Not just because for, for how ridiculous she is as a person for the rest of the movie. That scene yeah. is like super dark. It's very dark. It's very haunting. And then she, she has, she tries to flip it on him psychologically and being like, you know, it's okay. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. And like, try instead of fighting him, she's like, she instantly flips it. And that's not what you think that she has that depth as her character per se. But then when she starts to like really go in for it and like, you know, and really seal the deal and make it think that she's there and she's you know, growing for it, she tries to grab the drill and he swats yeah. her hand away. Then she goes down to grab his penis, like unbutton his belt. And then when that happens, he just goes ape shit. So there's a lot of phallic connections to the drill, to the sexuality, to this rape scene. And what was even darker about all of this is you it, – it's like a, I don't know, 45 minute or seconds to a minute and a half scene that we're watching – and her two best friends just walked out of the room five feet away. So your assumption is, are they just watching her about to get raped and murdered and they're not coming in here and smashing plates on his head or attacking him or biting him or punching him? You you just think that she's getting raped and, and murdered and her friends are watching. But there was an edit that they did this post-production because they, they had her topless in a thong. They were gonna, It was a Corman thing, I think, right? And yeah, um, it was just – it was really – they, they had to edit it in after the fact because even her hair is different and her makeup is different in this scene. You can tell, but it was it was pretty it was pretty dark. I thought. And uh, let's just talk about the fact that I I think that the I know we're not going to go that much into Final Girls, but the Final Girl in this one is definitely like paint drying. Jackie. Yeah. Well, I mean, compared compared to like Crystal Bernard, uh, well, her that's her real name, Courtney, Courtney. and then like uh, that Valerie in the first well, one. The first it's, one. It's pretty much. I mean, everything she like says in the whole movie is pretty much just like deadpan. What you bring? Well, besides that, oh, <laughs> which is a total, which is a total shocker, if you're watching it. Because she doesn't, else, she literally doesn't seem to care about anything at all ever. Well, what else is a total shocker is this guy takes her home from the beach, they kiss, and she goes, "So you like me? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, I just made out with you for twenty seconds. Of course, I think I kind of like you. I mean, and yeah, we just and we just listened to this really awesome song. Oh my god, totes. <laughs> so she she is a little weak. I mean, compared, I'm saying like compared. Compared. To um. Uh. I mean, but, I think Maria or her fr- and I can't remember. I'm, I'm losing her. It's her friend's name. Su- What's her friend's name? Su- Susie. Susie, Susie. That's what I thought. The one that like jumps out of the window pane. Oh God! Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, but, but, uh, yeah, that was. Then that, yeah, that's stupid. But like, I thought those two were way more interesting characters than her. Yeah. So, and. And I agree with that. And I think Maria even became more interesting um, 
but at the end of the day, yeah, Jackie's kind of kind of blah. She's kind of a mm. what a, and whatever that scene is. No, I'm not talking about the one that we're going to talk about. And I know you know which one, uh, but I'm talking about the one where she's talking about dating the older guy being like the the hardest five minutes to sit through. Like when, uh, when, her, when her and Maria are on the back porch, she's like, yes. he's, he's just really cute. And like, Maria. we're going out tomorrow night. We're going out tomorrow night. Oh, 50. How old is he? Oh, 50. Maria. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, let's, let's, let's not forget about the pizza. Deli- like not the pizza delivery girl because she gets killed, but the guy, uh, what is his name? Uh, the really annoying guy that, that ends up delivering the pizza for them. Is it, is it Frank? No, uh, Tom, it's, Michael, no, it's, Duncan, it's, it's, Duncan, 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 with that, with that blonde ball cut. Bye. Yes. Look, I'm like a troll. I think he also says Maria at some point. He does. Go, and he, I feel like he, his body kind of like Maria kind of goes with it. Yeah. And let me point out too, that all three of these movies have a long, like a pretty long scene of the guys that are involved in the movie, watching, watching. them through the window, doing pretty much pretty the exact, much like, like in the first the one, they're like they're getting undressed. And the second, second one, one, they're having they're like having a pillow fight, fight naked. naked. And then in and this one, one, they walk they in know. while they're doing their strip tease because that's what girls do. Cause girls show girls how to strip tease. At that, summer that, parties. that was Corman. Yeah. Oh, totally. But and and okay, while so, and while we're talking about um the pizza delivery, and we made this connection in, an, in, a, in a prior podcast on our special with Friday the Thirteenth, you do know who that pizza delivery girl is, don't you? Oh, I know she's a, I I do know, but I can't remember right the second. But I know she's in something else. She's in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Which one is she? So um her name is uh I think Sandra. And she's the girl. Oh. That she she's have her boyfriend's on top of her, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the the, the, yeah. the spear comes right that down girl, on them. Yes, her. Yes, that girl That's in her. real life uh, had like a lot of issues, like with drugs and stuff after she after her those movies, and she like they couldn't find her, like people couldn't find her for years because she was like homeless and stuff. Oh wow! And finally, like she came back around, and now she's doing like the well, I guess not now because of the pandemic, but she was doing like this. Um, you know, going to signings and stuff, and apparently she looks really rough. Well, that happens. Well, that's just some information. Um, okay, so so on a scale, okay, let's let's just like rate these each, so we can go into the other set that we were going to talk about. But like, if we were on a scale of, you know, one to five stars, oh one, two, and three. And like, this well, scale, one, this scale is just going to be in it's this just for, universe. It's, it's, yes, in this universe, not in like just yeah, like, no, yeah, like a, a, four star, a four star rating here. Okay, um, I would five, give five, five for Summer Party Massacre three. Oh, I thought you were saying it on a four star rating. I was, but out of four, just give your rating for all three of these out of a five star rating. So I'm going to rank Slumber Party Massacre two. 4.5. Oh, yes, same. I'm going to rank Slumber Party Massacre 3, 4. I agree with that. And I'm going to rank Slumber Party Massacre 2, 3.5. I'm going to rank that 2.5, but I agree with you on the other two. So, and that is my order then, too. It goes 2, 3, 1 in that order. And just to say that, like, just to say that I give Summer Party Massacre 2 a 4.5 out of 5, and I give, you know, let's just say Halloween 2 a 4, doesn't mean I think it's better scales adjust depending the scales adjust well, i do well <laughs> but you know i don't i don't i mean part scales two of aren't halloween, the same. part two of halloween is is the only one that i like but i do not like the halloween franchise at all so, so yeah. I, yeah i rank that i i would rank yes even though i like part two i would rank that lower than probably any of these honestly <laughs> for rewatchability, sure. Oh yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just sure. trying to say, you know, my, the rating, a four star rating in this franchise, doesn't equate to a four star rating 
in another franchise. Like, well, it's not a, like it. It's not like scale. you would say like uh, the extra like or Texas yeah, I, I, Massacre I, I, is like is on the same like wavelength as any of these. Wavelength. I wouldn't even give Exorcist a five. I'd give it a four or four and a half. But the fact that Summer Party Massacre then is a four and two is a four and a half. That doesn't mean I think it's better than The Exorcist. Um, I just. Well, I think okay. So my favorite is Dawn of the Dead. So I, you know, and in the realm and texas well texas chance the massacre and dawn of the dead but like so i give those five stars and the I shining. Give, yeah yeah and i but i give slumber party massacre a 4.5 but probably not if i was comparing it to dawn of the dead exactly so that's what we have to keep in but mind I might, though I, I might though just because of rewatch i mean i love i love part two i think it's so good i, I mean it it's so like much. dumb but i love it so much Okay, so what what were we gonna talk about next? We were talking about our favorite kill, like our five. Wait, how many kills are we gonna do? Well, I mean, I have I compiled a list of five kills that I love. Okay, okay, so five, and this is five across across the board. We're not gonna do kills from every single one. So, right, my kills are uh, all across all three movies. Okay. So, do you want me to just do my top five? Yeah, do do it. Uh, Re- reverse you know, order five to one yes okay so my number five and this goes back into as well as ties into jackie the final girl from the third one i like um ken's death i think that her jackie just going ham on him with this drill is is, oh, is a, a, good a, one, master, yeah. a masterpiece i mean she is just relentless and she is just she's you know when you watch those movies and you're like no hit him again hit him again Hit him again, damn it. She just doesn't stop stabbing him, and it's amazing, and I think that is just a great death. Okay? That's a good one. Number four, I did this for you, um, but but I do love it, and you know I love it. So from Slum Party Massacre 1, Kim. Do you remember Kim? The, the fridge. No. Uh, she might go in. Mm, I don't know she, if she goes in the fridge or not. I think she's the one that goes in the fridge. But anyway, they get boarded up in the bedroom upstairs, and while they're trying to escape, you know, Russ yeah, comes in, that's Russ her. in the room. Yeah. He gets she, she he stabs, stabs her. Stabs him in the stomach. Yes, and then I remember they're yeah. dancing. They're dancing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, so, they look like they're dancing. They do. It's very dramatic and swoony, and he's like dipping her. You know, so I love that yeah. scene. Um, number three, it's Summer Party Massacre three again. Uh, I know that this is. A driller franchise, but this is a non. This is my favorite non-drill death. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing ever. But the electric vibrator in the bathtub. Oh my god! Yes. Iconic. I'm like, really? Come on now. But you know, I like it because it's not a drill. I mean, you can only like a same drill kill over and over again. You know, from the behind. And, or they're, from, well, they're, and they're not all. They're not all, but all, but almost all drill kills is either a drill to the chest or a drill through the back. So it's like, how am I gonna compare those? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and while keeping on the theme of you know differences here, uh, my second favorite kill is the driller killer in part two. She lights his ass on fire, laughs maniacally, and basically throws him off the top of the construction site. I love it. Yeah, that one's good. And then. My favorite kill of all time in the franchise is Russ Thorne, the killer in the first movie. He is stabbed. He is slashed. His hands cut off. He gets impaled on the machete. I mean, they really give it to him hard. Um, And that's another way that movie differs a little bit than the rest is they do. They they kill him in every way (laughs) they can in that movie. And it's just really cool to me. Yeah, I agree with that, too. Okay, so my I, I don't have mine in any particular order okay. because I don't know. I like it's the thing is that like when I was making this list, I started thinking about a lot of the things in part two, but that's like they weren't deaths. You know, like the I started thinking about like the that um, p- pimple and stuff, and I'm like, well, that's not a real death. Um, so uh, that's, um, those, yeah, that's why I put yeah. those in my review versus the death scenes. Yep. So, okay, I love the first death in part three. For some reason, it remind I don't know why, but it reminds me. Oh, I guess I know why. It reminds me of Sleepaway Camp part three, like the beginning of it, even though it's totally a different death. Because in the third, in Sleepaway Camp, she like kills her by like 
running over her. It's the urban setting in the alley. It's the urban setting, yeah. In the, and in the also, alleyway. Yeah. yeah, when she gets like stabbed through the back with the drill, I love that. And then, of course, I have the vibrator in the bath because, I mean, it's electric. Obviously, Holla. And then, um, I've Kim, I put Kim's death from part one, and I think that's probably because I like the fridge part. Yeah, I just but, saw your your text, and yeah, you're right. It was it's Kim in the fridge. Yeah. Um, and then I have the drill through Sally. Like when the drill comes through the wall and knocks the phone off the the yep yeah I love that and then I have TJ's death TJ for part two because he like he still has that like valley boy accent while he's being yeah. killed and I just yeah love that. that was pretty traumatic too I think like because like if I you think, in, well you think they're getting away because they get away to that house and the that, neighbor's house yeah. And then, but and then that though that the while there's nothing really happening in that movie, like in terms of kills until the end, that scene where it's the camera is like thirty yards away and you see Sheila and TJ banging on that door, and it like ups the anxiety a little bit. And while they're playing, you know, he's p- playing a song or or whatnot or singing, but then they kind of he he's been injured, so she's and she's carrying him again. She's so carrying this is, him, yeah. She's yeah. carrying him, which again it, it would have been a role reverse in a normal slasher movie probably. Um, but then, you know, then they get pinned up into the garage door. He pushes her away or she gets slashed. I don't remember, but then he just gets totally, it's that, that was a very great scene. Um, it was, it was, it was a scary death for me. And I will admit sometimes I stop the movie once the death start in the movie. Like, I, I mean, I've watched the whole thing a lot, but I'll, sometimes I'll just stop it before the deaths happen because I just like the chemistry oh, between all of them so movie. much. Yeah. But, um, but th- like that, that whole part gets really like, I get really anxious because you never know where he's going to pop up because he's not a real person. Yeah. Like, so, you know, it, he can just show up in the car. Like he's like behind, you know, in the back. He shows the up car in the car and, with a freaking flower in his ear and yeah. he's like, with his tongue. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? So yeah, while it is a fever dream and while he's supposedly been manifested, he still just like appears out of nowhere. Like you want to go grab a, some, a spoon for your dinner surprise drill in the face. I mean, I made that yeah. up, but he could be anywhere. It's yeah. It's very, unless you know it. Yeah. It can be very anxiety inducing. Well, it still does it to me. Like, yeah. I'll still be like, uh, I don't, okay. But it's only like 15 minutes of the movie, but so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, and I did, I did have three honorable mentions. I didn't know how to oh, rank you them. Did. See, like, oh, I, yeah, go ahead. You know, again, I, I wanted to call out some of the deaths that weren't totally drill related just because they, they were different. So we already sort of talked about it, but the pizza guy with the gouged eyeballs to me was, is, I love that. That's I love a good that. one. Yeah. He's, that's a really one. cool death. And the scene itself is cool how they open the door and he falls forward. Um, and also then in part three, um, it's 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 Ken and I forget who he's with, but they're in this construction site. Oh, well, they're with the weapon. they're with the guy that uh, the guy that just professes love. Isn't it with the guy that just professes love in front of the fish? It might be, but then with that, remember oh, he's like it is her. Face. It is her. Yeah. He's like, she's like, she's like, well, when should you kiss her? She's like, just do it and ask questions later. No, it's the guy that's with no. him. It's the guy to this, the, the guy and the girl are having a conversation in front of the swordfish. Yeah, and, he, and it's that it, guy it's that's with him. Yeah, he kind of looks like um the guy from the boy from Fright Night slightly. Yeah, he kind of does. But he gets his ankles kind of slashed with a chainsaw. Yeah, that one's that one hurts. To it watch. hurts. I don't know how it would kill you, maybe from blood loss, but but anyway. Well, yeah. Mission. And then the third one, I did put Sally's drill scene from part two as an it's honorable so mention. Stupid. I mean, it's so stupid because it is stupid because you brought it up earlier. Like instead of running right through the doorway, she runs one inch to the left and turns around to the wall. Um, the whole point of that is just so the drill can go through her into the phone that they're into using. the phone. Yeah. But she literally sits there screaming for what? I don't know. The entire length. Oh, my a, God. The she, entire length like, of a Pink Floyd song. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> the entire length of the song Money. I'm like, um, yeah, move, bitch. Get out the way. Just just do a zigzag roll into the doorway. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> she, she was like she walks past the doorway. And then instead of just like moving another inch back to the doorway yeah. she just stands there and she screams for like a literally like 30 seconds at least which is a really long time 
her scream it's also though it's a really good scream like it's a very like shrilly reverberating <laughs> yeah no she does and she does it well in part like, seven of friday the 13th too because she does. i just rewatched that yeah oh, i did too she does a great scene and when when what's his name yeah gets his face cut and and she's swimming naked she's oh, a yeah. good, she's a good screamer and she has um, a really good body i think she, she has great hips well she's, she's a butterface but you know, oh yeah but she's probably anorexic too because no um, one looks like that and no one looks like that i didn't know i thought it was just high-rise jeans and well, not when she's naked underwater in part seven. You can see her whole body. That probably is a body. I bet that's a body double. No, it isn't. Uh, you see Bush in that movie, and there's no way she got Bush. She had a. She had a. Uh, Heidi Kozak a, does not have Bush. Uh, no, you don't see any Bush in that. She has when, like a when, leotard in, on. She's full ass naked in some. In, in, she in, is, but when it goes from underneath, there's like a. You could tell that she has something on. Well, I thought it was Bush. I guess this is the black panties she no it's not no she's not supposed to have anything on it's like a naked suit i got you i got you i think i think that's what it is because i'm yeah but um anyway not the point um yeah, honorable mentions and you know and as we talked about before we have uh she the girl who plays sheila in part five playing a, and both of them play completely different characters in their friday the 13th movies they do but I see Heidi Kozak um, with. Well, with, yeah, she's still a little bit valley girl. She's, but she's still more a little, like she's like so and so party at two. Come on in. But like, you know. the other uh, Sheila, I'm yawning. I'm sorry, Sheila. Like she plays a nutcase in yeah. which part one is five. She? She's yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she's a totally different person. But yeah, she, but she's still got that. Kind of Bitchy. like, don't fuck with me. I'll stab you with a fork yeah. attitude. I mean, yeah, because well, she's. I think she's one of the ones that um, has the sheet that the kid gets his like chocolate bar on. I'd be pissed too. Stains. Uh, yeah, me too. Liquor stains don't come out. I would know. I mean, and I don't. I don't know. It, he's so like. Uh, we're not even talking about Friday the Thirteenth, but that guy, God, that kid is so annoying. I mean, like, what did you expect? Uh, Whatever his name is. Who ends up being the killer in part five? What's his name? Paramedic. R Rusty or whatever his name is. Like, did you not expect him to die? He's really annoying. Um, <laughs> I mean, also, why were you proud of that? <laughs> why are you so obsessed with your son? He clearly sucks. <laughs> well, and then you like you threw him here. I just it's just it's just it's just a weird thing. I don't. Yeah, you threw him into this halfway house with crazy people, and you're, like, shocked that this happened. And it's almost like I don't really feel like any of them are totally, like, I don't want to say use the word crazy and offensively here, but, like, why are they in this house where it's, like, none of them seem, like, like Violet even just seems, like, wh what's yeah, wrong with them? Yeah, probably, like, that? I guess depression. I don't know. Like, yeah, they, it, well, and if, it's if they're going like, to use a, yeah, if they're going to use a halfway house, like, they probably should do a little more character development so we know why they were there. They were there, and then if you're in a halfway house, I feel like there should be a little more security protocols set in place to where, yeah, like, yeah, like maybe not giving an aggressive, like, a uh, future serial killer an axe. Yeah, he's like, they, you can it, just forget it, you can forget it anyway. And then, but mean, Roy, Roy is the name of the Roy, dad. yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna put this my kid, my fat kid with a problem with candy bars into a halfway house where they let the most aggressive uh, person who lives there chop wood with an axe. Sounds like chopped wood with an axe. God forbid he got chocolate on his gray cutoff t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so anyway, do we want to talk about our favorite villain now? Yeah, I think we should go with three to one. Oh, I just gave my favorite villain, um, but I can. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll, well, I'll, I'll talk about my most favorite villain more, but my third right. favorite villain, I would say, or my my least favorite. I think I'm gonna villain, disagree with you on this. I think I think I am. I think I know what your number one's gonna be. My least favorite is Ken from Part Three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, just because <laughs> he's a terrible actor. 
Um, he's so good and, in hide and go shriek. Well, we, this ain't hide <laughs> and go not, shriek. He's not. He's not great. <laughs> he's also not co-starring with you know Russell Todd anymore. This is over. He, Russell Todd wasn't in hide and go shriek. What are you talking about? I thought, I thought you said he. I thought he was. No, he's in Chopping Mall, and he knows you're alone. Oh, Chopping Russell, Mall. Russell Todd would not. I got it. I was getting Chubby Mall confused. That's my fault. He was also in Another World. I'm trying to get him to oh. add me on Facebook right now. I knew anyway. Another World and where the boys Go. are. Oh, um, my God. I'm so obsessed with him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you number, he's just a bad actor. He's got really fantastic 90s hair. I mean, I'll give him that. But. Uh, oh, it is. Re- no, he does have a good haircut for 1990. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of hot. I won't. Yeah. I mean, I would have invited him. But he also then, you know, maybe I'll give him a little half point for she's in a garment bag in a closet. (laughs) 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 I mean, he has some good quotes, but. God, he has the best quotes, really. But he's just not he's just he's not scary to me. Like, even though we don't know who he is until halfway through, like as a killer. Halfway. Well, a third of the way like, through, right, maybe like thirty minutes in, yeah, or, well, or, or less, or, or, or five 20. seconds, or five yeah. seconds into the preview, or if you want, yeah. <laughs> okay, so my number two then will be Russ Thorn. Oh, okay, I'm shocked. Actually, I thought he would be your number one. Uh, no, like I said earlier, he's the one I would least let into my house. Let I know, but I, I didn't think this was a list of people you'd let into your house. Well, this is a list of who I'd let in, <laughs> in inside of me. So uh, <laughs> with with the drill, you would, or, have, you would rather have Russ Thorn inside of you than Ken. He doesn't have to be a good actor to get inside of you. I go for Silver Daddies. Bye. So he is not cute, though. Ew. He ain't cute, but whatevs. Uh, he just is not a. He's just he's Ken is a little just too broken for me. Um unhinged. The rest of the one at least has well, anyway. <laughs> I was about to say, uh <laughs> he, has he escaped nothing. the mental hospital <laughs> and like went on a rampage for no reason. He has yeah, he has nothing actually. Um uh, but the number one is definitely just you know, as a drill or a killer. He has no name, but he's like this mix of, you know, Andrew I don't know. Usually- Yes, with with like the fawns, and he's got some Elvis vibes. He's just the leather. He's like a leather daddy. A leather his, daddy. In like his twenties, I mean. But and he he keeps doing this thing with his tongue all the time. And, and I don't then, like that. It's creepy. And then he'll like put the drill up, and like he's like really sexual. And that's that's not why he's my favorite because he's <laughs> very sexual with his drill and i, I want to sleep with him the reason he's my favorite is um i think that his puns and rhymes are hysterical um i don't and his understand songs are great his songs his, are good um he sings he hops around in his little pointed ass boots and does all this dancing and choreography while killing them it's amazing um he has the coolest weapon like it's a guitar drill i mean that is bad ass i just love it I just think his outfit is cool. His weapon is the coolest. He is, and he has some scary scenes, like when the montages. He can freak me out. Um, I just hey, think he's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, that's I, mine. <laughs> I, okay, so I think my least favorite is Russ Thorn, just because I just don't care. Also, when he like, you know, the scene I'm talking about, the blanket he, scene, the sheet, the sheet over him. <laughs> yeah. When he jumps up out after the sheet, I just don't under and it's in all the trailers too. And I'm like, this is so stupid. So he's my least favorite. Um, then I think you know what? I'm think I'm gonna put the driller killer from part two next because I love his music. Oh and then I think I'll put listen, I love hide and go shriek, and I think he's hot. Well, this is called I'll- Summer Party Massacre. Not hide and go shriek. I know, but he's in Slumber Party Massacre three, so I'm gonna put him in my. I like him. I think he's hot. What I mean, like if he killed me afterwards, at least I'd be dead. I've seen the men, I've seen the men you're with, and they're more like Drilla Killer than Ken. Okay, well that is also because uh, I don't date the people that I think are attractive. <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I we, don't, we don't have to go into the fact that i don't have taste no, um, I, <laughs> <laughs> ken i mean like 
yeah, he saw it. I'll, I'll go for that. Plus, I think he was very upset with Juliet's death. Even though he did it. I mean, I think... It, Is Juliet the one that was in the garment bag? Yeah. That was the one they focused on the most. Well, yeah, he was upset think, about it. And I think that she also was reaching for his penis, and then he flipped out because they were on the bed together. They were in the room, and they were about to have sex. I thought they I, – I, okay, from what I remember, they did have sex. They might have. I they, just, do, I, they do have sex. And, I, and like, and in my head, the, the vibrator was just like an accident. Or maybe someone else did it. Maybe I Duncan did, did it. An accident. He pulled it out of a drawer, plugged it up, and threw it in the damn water. <laughs> I would love to know about these archaic dildos that you plug up and can kill you in the bathtub. Because, like, the ones I know about, you can use them in the bathtub. Like, well, I also, if you're, t- I was watching this last night, and my husband says, "Who the hell just takes a bath at, at, at a slumber party when there's a party going on downstairs?" I know. Like, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> because I guess she. Well, no, the reason she's taking a bath is because they did have sex. Well, and then at the end of the day, too, then. But, but still, like you know, closes, but you, you, that wouldn't I'm happen gonna, though. If you had sex yeah. there at a slumber party, you would let your pussy sink. <laughs> or or just, just or just like let it drip drop over the toilet like goodbye get, next day yeah like get a washcloth get some summer's eve like, like a whole and, bath yeah and then, you, don't need, you don't need a whole bath and i don't care if i'm at a summer party or not if i when i take a bath i don't close the shower curtain i well i don't if she hadn't closed the shower curtain the she would have seen some stink ass person come in there throwing a vibrator in, the, in there like goodbye Mm-hmm. So she deserves to be in a body a body bag in a closet. <laughs> I, thought, I really did think it was body bag. No, I did. Okay, I did too. I so, said that out loud. I quoted it. I pre-quoted the scene last night. I was like, in a body bag in a closet. That's what and we then, always said. And then when it came on, my husband's like, "Aha, it's a garment." Bag. Yeah, because why? Because it doesn't make sense. After you said that, I was like, "Why would he say it's a body bag?" <laughs> it doesn't. But we did it uh, for years. Yeah. Um, Okay, so next is uh, your favorite songs. Oh, ben, okay, by the way, guys, I know you're, this is, this has gone on for like an hour and a half. Um, I know you're expecting it to just be songs from part two, but it's not. Surprisingly enough, um, it's not just part two. I have one song from part three, and let's keep in mind there are no songs in part one other than a Casio keyboard, so right. <laughs> yeah. those are included. Um, but my number five was our introduction song. It's the little four verse refrain or whatever. Um, the, the sugar shop, candy shop, daddy song. What that, I want most is a pie in the sky. Yeah. So I got yeah. that one. It um, would have been a hit too. If she hadn't died. God, it would have been a hit. No one's going to be able to do it like she could. Not even Gaga. <laughs> Except for that she's still alive, but. Whatever. Um, number oh, well, four. We should we should do a petition to get Heidi Kozak to put that song out. Oh my God! I wonder if that was her real voice because it wasn't their real voices. But I, I wonder think if it that was. was. It, it sounded like it would have been her voice. Well, Grog, I'm I'm coming for you, um, <laughs> Heidi. Heidi Kozak, we got you, boo. <laughs> um, then number four, I put Why by Wednesday by Wednesday Week from Summer Party Massacre Two. It's their band. Yes. And um, Why I believe. Why, why? 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 When the you when the boys come, yeah when the boys come and they're partying with them that's their yes their... yeah it's when they get back from dinner. Also yeah and going back in towards like a little more female empowerment here these this is like eighty seven and these girls are in a band and they're putting their band equipment and they know how to hook it up and they know how to do all like I get that that's a thing nothing. but like that's a pretty powerful statement you know what i mean like yeah i get that you're also dancing with a, a floor lamp with your bra off and they're throwing feathers on you but then you also know how to hook up a, a bass guitar and an amp i mean <laughs> no, i agree i agree <laughs> and then, like i said better than the runaways it's true um number three i have the introduction song in some party massacre part three by sally madison called hold your fire oh my god i wish that i wish that i could just play a little clip. I mean, maybe I will in the thing, can, but I have a little. We can add song clips later. Like oh, at the my end. God. And then, it's you know. It's so good. It's you know, such it's, a good song. Yeah, it goes back to 
I want a silver caddy with a land out top. Well, when I hear this song, I think of the scene and these girls are riding down the freeway in, I guess, California <laughs> on the back of the hood, the back of the back of the car singing, the, listening to the song. It's a really good song. And Ale- by the way, everyone in high school, Alex and I used to pretend we were doing that. We sure as hell did. We did. And I don't even know. I don't even know. How that worked. <laughs> like, how that would worked. we just like sit there and like pretend we would just like sit there and look at each other, like pretending we were having fun and then get up on the top of the couch or something? That makes me think about how we would drive around in dark subdivisions and neighborhoods at night and listen to the theme songs from scary movies and look around like a killer was chasing us. But we did that instead of going to Young Life. Well, it's true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> number two. Was um I have two number twos. Shoot. Well, I have a tie then. Um, I have If Only by Wednesday Week from Slumber Party Massacre 2. That which song's is, really good. Which is the song that the band practice in the garage where they invite Matt over to watch him and he's all goofy and gross on a car. I didn't know you could twerk on a car, but he proved me wrong. Uh, but it's a great song. And it's tied with... Um, let's buzz, which is the uh, one of the songs. Yeah, that's, that's the one I don't. Thing. I don't. I don't like that one. But I don't typically like that type of music. It's like a rockabilly something. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, like rockabilly very much. It's, but. Yeah, I don't typically like it, but I like it. I wouldn't like that song had I not had the visuals to accompany it. That's true because it's the one that he does the dance number too. Yeah, it's like yeah, and and then I guess that's the one he kills. Um. Sheila, too. Yep, it yep. is. Okay. At least she got a good music number out of it. Are we okay. ready for number one? So, yeah, you. I know, uh, I, I know that. I know, I know you're going to have a, a, maybe some a different order, but I think our number one is the same. Yeah, oh, yeah. I want to be, be, be your Tokyo, Tokyo convertible. convertible. Mm-hmm. I want to have fun, fun with, with you. you. Yeah. And it's a real song. Too. And. And I, uh, we it took us forever. I remember, like, it was like, I don't know, 10 years after high school graduation, you're like, I finally found Tokyo I found Convertible. It exchange. If I like, found it when I was working at a record store. I got yeah. an import. So, question. when we Kevin th- Costner's know, in that band. That was it. Yeah, it's like, you know, yeah. the, the internet will tell you all kinds of things. That was Kevin Costner's band. Yeah, it'll say, it'll say like, other things now, but I know for, I mean, I had the import, so. Yeah, I just, I just love it, and, you know. Okay, so my favorite songs are, and I think I, well, I'll forget probably, uh, I, and I'm not doing them in particular order, except for number one's Tokyo Convertible, and number two is If um, if Only, about Wednesday week, If Only, and that, that, that whole thing, um, and then Why, about Wednesday week is on there, and what's the one that's not Let's Buzz? Something like Get Down Tonight or... Not you... No. <laughs> not, not Get uh, Down Tonight. Don't Let Go. Don't, don't let, go. let Go. Hold on tight. Hold on. I knew it was don't a three-word title. Yeah, it's three yeah. words. That so. one. And then... <laughs> I guess Pie in the Sky. I mean, and there are still a couple more we haven't named, but they just aren't as good. No. And it's hard. It's hard to have more when part one literally has a Casio keyboard. Yeah, and I don't think, and I don't remember the other songs in part three, really. But before we go, because I know we've talked about our lists, but before we go, we do need to talk about something very important. I'm intrigued. We're going to have to talk about Maria's nipples. (laughs) You're cutting out. Baloney boobs. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. When I when yelling loudly in the microphone, I guess makes me cut out. I remember telling <laughs> Jeff, my husband, last night, I was like, there's this girl. She's pale as hell. She's an Elvira wannabe. She looks like Elvira, yeah. And or Vampirella or whatever, Vampira. He kept calling her Vampira all night long or whatever. <laughs> um, and I, I think. Oh, Hell's Cafe. That song, yeah. Hell's Cafe, is a really good song. Yeah, yeah. From I think two. that might be above Pie in the Sky for me um but when it comes to maria's nipples um i think i was i was examining them super close last night like i was up there on the screen 
I think that she knew she was going to do topless, and it looks to me, based on her skin, based on all the coloring and all the her 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 complexion, I think she put lipstick on her nipples and then did lip nope, liner on, she on did the not, outline. Because I have I have looked into them as well because they're so the intriguing. Reason, the reason is because <laughs> I have told I've like tried to explain these nipples to people that haven't seen the movie, and they don't believe they they won't believe me. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, because someone will be talking about baloney boobs or something you know because i've crass friends and i'm like oh well you've never seen baloney boobs until you've seen this and they don't and they're like oh it can't be that bad every every single time i have to pull up the entire movie on youtube because they don't have just a clip of the strip scene and i have to find that part yep and, and once i play it for them they're like oh my god but they're so outlined. I really feel like she put lip liner on them. There is no way. Who would want their tits to look like that? Someone who, I mean, her tits don't look like that now, so she didn't like them. She has, I've seen her you lately. You know. Look on IMDb. Her boobs are humongous now, and she's tame. Yeah, but you haven't seen her tit. You haven't seen her nipples. Well, no, I haven't. No, you haven't. And I don't think any woman would want their nipples to look like that at all. And I just think that she, I think that they're I think that she literally I think she put lipstick on them. There's just no way she her nope. a lot nope. of the, a, a lot of the times though people's nipples are the same tint ish of their lips. Okay, you know what, Alex, you're gay, and so you need to stop. I still know what you, boobs are. My dad owned a, my dad my dad owned a porn store. But I know I'm what boobs saying, are. You, no, I know you know what boobs are, but you don't know the 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 baloney nipple life. And I've seen other ones. They haven't been this bad, but almost this bad. I, I just feel like she. I feel like she exacerbated her situation. Why would you ago. do that? They I look like know. they. They actually look like you put baloney on her chest. I mean, like, why, would, like, for real. why would she? Why would she have those bangs and that hair? I mean, well, she, because she wanted to look like Elvira, which she, was cool at the time. But baloney nipples have never been cool. I mean, and also, I also imagine <laughs> that when they filmed that scene, like, if, you know, if like they didn't know, like, what her what her tits looked like or something. And then, like, they're so they're filming the scene. Everyone's like, you know, on set. And then <laughs> and then she uh, she takes her top off. And I I imagine it being like crickets in there. <laughs> You know oh what I mean? God. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I hate you. like they play and then everyone's just like, uh. Well, I guess this is all we, I mean, you're already in the movie. So, so like, we can't really do anything. Like we can't like recast. So I guess we're just going to show him. So true. So true. That, so is, true. No, that is true. That is what her boobs look like. That last one. Well, I have, um, I have, I have faith. I have faith that she did something to exacerbate it a little bit. Okay. Well, I don't know why literally anyone would do that. That's why I was saying you're gay because that explanation makes no sense. Well, no, it looks like to me there is an outline on her nipples to me that makes it look like when you, she either had a reduction or an enhancement to where there's like the the, the scabbing, the scarring around moving the nipple. But well, her you're boobs making are, it sound even more. But her boobs, <laughs> but her boobs aren't big and they weren't reduced, so it's yeah, like yeah, no, it's it, now you're just calling it scab boob. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just, it's just, it's so not what any nipple I've ever seen in my entire life looks like. No, same. And, and you know what? I pray, you know what? Like after I saw that movie, when I look in the mirror and I'm naked, I pray to God every day, you know, like that's the, maybe God does exist because I don't have baloney nipples like that. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, was there anything else we needed to go over because on, on these movies? I think the baloney boobs is a great way to end it. There's nothing that I didn't get to talk about in any of these films. No, I think, I think, I, I think we've run the gamut on all of I knew that you were going to bring up her, her breasts or her How could you her, not? Her how, could, how could anyone not watch? I don't. It's so outlandish. It really is. Like, how could you not bring that up? You know what, though? If she ever just, like, flashed me in real life, you, you know what I would say to her? What? Maria! Oh, my God. Maria! <laughs> I can't believe those are baloney nipples. Because they would be. 
like, oh my god, your nipples, Oscar Myers' little sister? <laughs> I'm not even making sound. That's all. Oh my god, your little Myers. Wait, little Myers? Who's little Myers? Oscar Myers. I call him Little Myers. Baloney has a first name. <laughs> oh my God, Maria. Oh my God, Baloney. Little My Little Myers. <laughs> Oscar Myers, little sister. I just I've called him Little Meyer. Um, uh, Baloney. I mean, he just screamed Baloney at her. Baloney charcuterie. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what guys we could go into quotes but like there's no way we could do that without y'all being like this is just some kind of like high school like i don't understand any of these jokes so <laughs> yeah you gotta hear the quote yourself so and well and also they would all just be like inside jokes that yeah. no one would understand <laughs> so yes yeah.